Hey guys, the year is 2021 and we are still playing the same game. So for those who are new, who needs help which class to pick, or a returning player who wants to be updated, or even a veteran who have nothing else to do while fishing, well, you come to the right place. We are back again after some minor nerf and balances since our last update, with two new classes being added. As usual, before we start, let me tell you that changes happen pretty frequently. What looks best today may be nerfed hard tomorrow. So better yet, especially if you're just starting in video, is to play the class you enjoy the most. We do have some gameplay clips in this video for you to look into, and if you already have narrowed down the classes you want, then this video might finally help you decide which class to pick. But again, the most important one is to play what you like, be it the class aesthetics or gameplay, as you will spend thousands of hours on that character, unless of course, you decide to quit halfway. <laughs> Alright, without further ado, let's start with our very first class, which is the Warrior. He is one of the very first class to ever grace Black Desert, using Sword and Shield as main weapon and a great sword in Awakening. The Warrior has been a very balanced class in most of his time, a jack of all trades, master of none. And when I say master of none, I do not mean in a mediocre way, but more of a middle to better class in each criteria, though not really being the top tier of each. For Awakening, its PvE clear speed is good in low AP spots like Gas and Fogans, and the recent buffs makes him great again in mid and high AP spots like Akman and Hysteria. He also shines in 1 vs 1 PvP, which is very very important for long grinding session, in order to defend your spot, which happens a lot in contested areas. While in large scale PvP, the removal of the lingering SA hurts warriors a lot, making it a lot less tanky and forcing it to find other ways to engage the enemies. And to make this possible, you will need a lot of its animation cancels and combo to be an effective class. Going with this succession, basically losing your great sword skills in favor of your main weapon, when succession was first released, the warrior immediately came out on top, and as expected, recent balances has kinda nerfed the succession capability while buffing its awakening form. He is still better in low AP spots compared to the awakened warrior due to its speed, but he's lower in high AP spots if an Awakened Warrior performs his animation cancels. They do have less skills, but those skills still do absurd amount of damage that gives the Warrior a very easy time in grinding. At the same time, he still maintains his PvP advantage amongst other classes with his grab and block. This is true for both 1 vs 1 and large heal PvP, making Succession Warrior still an all-around great class, although a far cry from where he was during the start of the year. The next one we have is the Valkyrie. It is the female counterpart of the warrior and the paladin class equivalent in the world of Black Desert. A class composed of female warriors loyal to the cause of Elion, which is the god of light and fire. They wield sword and shield as main weapon and a huge lance in awakening. After the great nerf in stamina, the Valkyrie has been one of the worst grinder in low and PvE, with its very limited dash range. You cannot also sprint while wielding the lancea, forcing you to walk most of the time. She once got the moniker as the wheelchair class, although the recent minor buff on her makes her somewhat okay again. Also, once you get past on the initial stages of the game, then the Valkyrie shines in high AP spots, particularly in Skriya, Hysteria, and Star's End, having huge burst damage and having the ability to sidestep easily to get those sweet back attacks. In 1 vs 1 PvP, the Valkyrie is a pretty mediocre class. There has been no nerf on her recently, she actually even got some damage buff, but her big problem is her unprotected skills. She has some good outplay potentials with a forward guard on her initiation skills, but she lacked the protection on her damage dealing skill, making it very difficult to execute. She still does have a great block and an okay grab, helping her win in some PvP encounters. In large scale PvP, don't get fooled with its large shield, as a Valkyrie is not really wanted as a tank class, but rather more in the supporting role. It has its own version of protected area and AOA heal skill, which is very important during initiation. Although the recent nerf on PE makes it a lot less required in initiations now, but it is still better than not having anything at all, right? The vacuum is also very useful, although very hard to hit, while its black spirit rage gives multiple guarantee kills. That is, if you don't die while casting it. Outside those and the Valkyrie is pretty much useless, as its forward guard has no use against AoE skills thrown by other classes. She's better more on the backline and the sideline while avoiding the main force of the enemy guilds. 
But again, the supporting skills makes her a very wanted class for Node Wars and Siege Wars. Going now with the succession update, and you will now have the Valkyrie discard her lands and continue the teachings of the Church of Elyon. She is actually called as the Paladin class in the mobile version, which offers pretty consistent lore with the PC counterpart. Anyway, at the moment, the succession form of the Valkyrie offers better performance in most areas of the game. She's still bad in low-end spots due to her very limited movement skills, but her performance in high-end spots are great. Not to mention, she's pretty simple to use and have a lot of sustain that you won't need a single potion as long as you have the recommended DP on that area. This succession also offers better performance in 1 vs 1, as she has better protection in her damage dealing skill, all the while offering CC effects like Bound and Knockdown. While in large scale, she does lose her Vacuum Support skill and the Awakening ult, but she still has the PA and heal, which is always in demand, even after the nerf. She can also be a bruiser as shield throw is somewhat medium range and has a great frontal guard to boot. She's a lot easier class to play compared to her awakening form and offers great performance whatever you do. Striker, as the name implies, is a brawler type of character in pre-awakening, which gains the ability to summon clones to fight alongside him during awakening. In low AP spots, he is pretty good class with good dashes to run from pack to pack. High end spots however and he is pretty mediocre. It has some burst damage but can't really sustain it for much long. In small scale PvP, the striker is a good, could be better dueler. The dashes makes him able to move in and out of combat and pretty much attack in different directions in a very short time. It also has both grabs and iframes which is pretty much all you need in order to dominate your opponents. In large scale war, even if the striker can still tank the AoE from witches and wizards but he won't really last long in the front lines. Good thing he has the movement to position himself in order to effectively use his skill, while its black spirit rage gives tons of damage while being invincible himself. This striker is a pretty newbie friendly class which kinda falls off as you progress. This succession striker disregards his newfound power in favor of the teachings of his old master in Hasu Kingdom. Using his main weapon, the striker now deals a lot more damage in PvE. His AP scaling is also so great that he is now currently considered as the best class in grinding the top spots in game. But unlike the Awakening counterpart, he does need some gear to come online. And low AP spots might not be as smooth as you like if you don't have the gear to hit the AP scale. However, the main complaint with the succession skills is that it removes much of the striker CC kit on its pre-awakening form, rendering him very bad in any kind of PvP. As a result, many only gets into succession while grinding and go back to awakening during PvP. Some even purposely not get some of the succession skills in order to retain the flows and CC on its original form, which is kinda a big loss on the damage for the succession striker. The succession offers a very combo heavy class which is a lot of fun to play in PvE but very difficult to use in PvP. Now on its female counterpart, the Mystic. Again, another brawler class with lower burst damage but way more tanky and have much more CC skills. While the striker has fire element design, the mystic on the other hand has water and can and will literally throw water dragon towards her enemies. She is one stop class in game, but with the release of the succession updates, many has overshadowed her. She has dashes that can easily outpace other classes, except Musa and Mewa of course, and even though she has no burst damage dealing skills, but the consistent DPS melts enemies in spots like Akman. In higher AP areas however, and she starts to slow down, although still not considered a bad class. In small scale PvP, the Mystic is one of the top dueler. Her low damage is offset by its continuous knockdowns, making it very annoying to go against with. Her skill kit is to literally CC the enemies till kingdom come, while having a grab to go against super armor characters. In large scale PvP, the Mystic plays more on the supporting side with its vacuum plus slow. She won't really last long in the front lines, so it's better to pick off enemies from the sidelines and play what she's known best, which is to knock down enemies and just be annoying. Play the mental game that is. Moving on in this succession form, much like the striker, the mystic lost most of her utility skills in favor of more damage, which is always welcome in grinding in high AP spots and with recent adjustment and flash tap, solves her movement capability, making her on par with her awakening form in low AP spots. She basically has full martial spirit point all the time in PvE 
giving her maximum damage potential, but at the cost of amazing sustain and heal in awakening. The problem with the succession mystic is when it comes to PvP. Pretty much like succession striker, the mystic's additional damage cannot compensate with the loss of the awesome CC skills and sustain on its awakening form. And even if she's a combo based class, her skill does not flow as good. Also, compared to the monster's AI, it is very difficult to keep her martial spirit buff all the time as it's not as easy hitting an actual player. She's still a great dueler in her own right, but she falls off sharply when facing a group of players. Now to our first magic class, which is the wizard. Uses staff and dagger in pre-awakening and Igadur Sphera in awakening, which gives him an aesthetic similar to Invoker in Dota 2. Like witches, the wizard can control all the elements in pre-awakening, but will later lean on fire and water to do his bidding. The wizard is an amazing class in low end PvE, making it the best class during early days of VDO. It moves fast with its teleport, while the awakening kit attack a huge AoE in front and or around him, clearing mobs very fast. Sadly, it's not the same on high-end spot as he really cannot sustain much of his damage. Their AP scaling is also not that good, which makes it worse for high-end, though better at earlier levels. 1 vs 1, Witchards are simply known to be weaker than other classes. Yes, they do have some grab skill, but it's too slow to be reliable. Paired it with semi-close range attacks and it's pretty much difficult to avoid being hit yourself. In large scale war however, then it is also very sought after class, just like the Valkyrie and Witch due to its protective area and AoE heal skill. The pre-awakening stance is also range, making it a little bit safer to attack your enemies with your bomb fireball not rooting you on the ground. The succession path helps the wizard maintain the caster type feels of the class which was his original design. At the moment, he is such an amazing class with some of the best passives in the game. The wizard still retained its PvE advantage in low-end spots while becoming even better in high-end areas with larger damage compared to his awakening form. He is particularly good in Akman and can start grinding there in lower AP just like a guardian. In 1 vs 1, I'd say he is already a pretty good class Far from the best, but definitely better than its awakening stance. In large scale war, and here we see the succession wizard even go far above the rest of the classes. His split teleport makes him the best nuker in the game and can go in and out without a scratch. Not to mention that he still retains his protective area and heals, making him your best support and nuker all at the same time. I can give him a rating of 6 to be honest, that is just how good he is and maybe a little bit broken when it comes to group pvp. The witch is another magic class user in BDO which basically has the same skill set with the wizard in pre-awakening. She is a young prodigy of magic, having an affinity with lightning and earth, which is her main element during awakening while using the add sphera weapon. Like wizard, witches are great grinder in low AP spots but she fares better than her male counterpart in higher AP areas. In 1 vs 1, again, like Wizard, she is not that good due to being stuck in place while casting her skill. She does have some protections, debuff, and good damage, but it's mostly useless in front of classes that can grab. There are good witches who can work around these grabs, but most of the time, it's just a difficult matchup. Against grabless classes however, and she fares way better and can utilize her AoE and damage well enough to win. In large skill and as usual, being a class with the protective area skill, and she's immediately one of the most sought after. Amidst the chaos of war, she can most likely unleash her power most of the time without the need to worry so much on classes that might grab her. She's been one of the best in war since her release and continue to do so until today. Going with the Witcher's succession and you will have her back again holding the staff and dagger to beat her enemies. She's most of the time being compared to the succession wizard and without the split teleport and access to Ribam Farball, she's slightly weaker than her male counterpart. However, in PvE and those things won't really matter. The recent buff allows her to have no cast skill after a sidestep, making her deal a lot of damage in such a short time. She's still great in both low-end and high-end areas and with enough AP, 
can start doing better than her awakening form when grinding places like Hysteria. We can no longer call her weak in PvP, although again she's not as good as the wizard but only slightly less effective. Now that she can continuously use skills without casting, her damage output is crazy if you let her be. The only caveat is that she needs a lot of skill points, but this is true for majority of the succession classes. In large scale however, and all this does not matter. She may not be as good as a wizard, but she still has the damage, the AoE, and the support to be very useful against group fight. Witches and wizards are core in group PvP, and guilds will accept these classes because of their great utility. Again, please note that for most succession classes, and very prominently in witches and wizards, that it needs a lot of skill points in order to be effective. And with less than 1.5k skill points, then it's mostly recommended to stick to awakening for a moment as you will need a lot of your base skills in order for the succession to be effective. The Archer is the true range class in BDO. He is under Elven Descent, using crossbow for faster attacks and a great bow for sniping. Unlike other classes, the Archer basically can wield both weapon and the onset, but most of the great bow skills and damage are locked up until you finish its awakening quest. It is a great farmer in low and PvE, killing enemies from miles away, and still one of the top performers in high end spots, but may have trouble if you can kill mobs fast enough as he's very squishy. In 1 vs 1 PvP, the buff on the archer makes him pretty good. He has a huge range advantage and has the capability to keep the advantage, utilizing his skills to widen the distance between his enemy. He can also fight in melee range with his main hand weapon, but it's honestly not just as good and effective as just pummeling enemies from afar. In large skill PvP, and he is again a top fragger. The range advantage gives him the ability to hide behind her allies and basically pummel enemies with barrage of attacks while being safe themselves. Much of their skill also has crowd control effect and is simply devastating to unleash in huge group of enemies. Archers are literally the glass cannon with a job to deal as much damage as possible to as many enemies as possible. He's also pretty easy to play with a very simple gameplay that is to keep the distance from your enemies. There is no succession path for the archer as again, he already got his awakening weapon at the very start of the game. Moving on to its female counterpart which is the ranger. She is one of the very first class revealed for black desert and the first elven race we were able to play. She wields bow and dagger as main weapon and a dual dagger called the Camasylvian sword in awakening. In Awakening, the Ranger is a great class in low AP spots, they do have some mana issues, and will chug mana potions a lot, but they are still one of the faster classes out there and can move in between group of mobs very fast. In high end PvE, the Ranger is still a decent class. It's far from being the best, but can manage on its own. They just really lack the sustain needed for long raining sessions. Going now with PvP, 1 vs 1 and the ranger is an above average class. It has the ability to CC from afar using her bow and dash in and do huge damage like an assassin using her awakening kit. She also has a grab skill which is always a bonus for 1 vs 1. In large scale PvP, the ranger is not really sought after. She usually uses her bow in load wars in order to be safe but her damage really comes more with her awakening kit which is very dangerous to use in a group of people as she is very squishy. She better performs in role like an assassin to catch those people from the sidelines while using bow to try and deal a little damage and crowd control to the main group of enemies. Her role has changed though with the succession update, making her from a well-rounded class to a glass cannon similar to archer. The succession ranger is one of the better classes during the start of the succession update but has been nerfed to the ground. They have less protection and lost their grab in exchange to pure range damage. As a result, they became a faster grinder in PvE, both in low end spots and high end spots, but she simply excels more in low AP spots as she can melt them from afar similar to the archer. A main problem however is that a slight inclination on the ground can result to dealing no damage at all on some of her skill, which is very annoying. In return, 
Since she lost her grab, her 1 vs 1 PvP capability has been reduced greatly. She also no longer have that much damage to snipe people from afar, but the biggest problem she has is on its stamina, which results to the ranger not being able to run away at will. She also no longer have protection on its skills, which means a death sentence when an enemy is near. In Old War, again, similar to its male counterpart, she became a glass cannon and has a job to dish out huge number of damage to main group of opponents. They don't quite have the range of an archer, but they have the better AoE, which balances that one out. As long as she keeps her distance, then she can dish out that damage, but can die very fast if ever a class like ninja comes close. Sadly, the Succession Ranger is one of the hardest hit class post-Succession nerf, and is only better in lower end PvE compared to her awakening form. Up next, we have the Dark Knight, the third and final Elven class we have so far in BDO. The Dark Knight has once been the most OP class during release, but has since encountered nerf after nerf resulting to her falling from grace. She uses a Krieg Maser as main weapon, which is basically a long single-edged sword, while having a Verdiant in Awakening, which is a gloves capable to summon and levitate different swords and daggers. She is a very mobile class and capable of dealing both range and melee damage. In low and PvE, the Dark Knight excels with dashes that lets her move and clear a group of mobs at the same time. Like her sister the Ranger, the only thing keeping the Dark Knight from top is that she consumes a lot of blue potions to keep up with her MP consumption. In high end spots however, and she is pretty mediocre, and will require a lot more EP to kill a pack of mobs, and at the same time will also be needing quite more DP in order not to die. In PvP, she might have good mobility and iframes, but her CC are slow and mostly unprotected, while having no grub to tap it all. She is currently just average tier in 1 vs 1, and might just slightly be better compared to Richards. Large scale on the other hand, and the DK does have a spot like all other range capable units. She is more like a bomber and can deal some support damage from the sidelines towards the main enemy group, but that's about it. She can help trying to catch running targets, but she can't really do 1 vs 1 well, so she will need help in picking up fights with stray enemies. Now going with the Dark Knight succession, and by the looks of it, she's a lot better than her awakening form. She might fall a bit slower in low end areas after losing great mobility skills from her awakening kit, but she absolutely nails it in high AP areas with huge damage and great iframes. She is also a very good dueler with good outplay potential, but does needs understanding on how the class works as she is a little bit slow on using her skill. But again, the damage is amazing and have little gaps on her protection. She also has a very different role in Old Wars as she no longer have her range attacks to keep her safe. She will need to engage now in melee range which is not really ideal as DKs are very squishy. However, she does have great damage and crowd control effects which, if placed on time properly, may enable the DK to get some kills. The problem now is on how to get out after engaging, and that will depend greatly on the player to utilize her other iframes. Now on to our next class which is the Tamer. She is once the only class to be able to have a summon before Richards got their awakening elementals, and the youngest looking class before Shy arrived. She is a melee assassin that deals magic damage, with her short sword as main weapon and a celestial bow staff in awakening. The tamers are known to have their summon Heilang, which is a huge spirit wolf to help her in battle. This pet wolf has more utility skills compared to the elementals of the witchards, with the AoE stun ability and even act as a mount if needed. She is slightly above average in low AP spots with enough mobility to move in between packs of enemies but will struggle a bit in high-end areas as she needs a little bit more work in order to clear a group of enemies while being squishy herself. In 1 vs 1 PvP however, Tamer hands down is one of the top tier class, with iframes to dodge attacks and the quickest grab to ensure CC. The pet is also very annoying with random CC being applied to your enemy, making the Tamer a very difficult class to fight 1 vs 1. On the other hand, for large gate PvP, and the tamer falls short to around average. She is an assassin, which as usual, prefers to be on the sidelines picking up random fights. But she do have one of the best rage kills, which can basically give multiple guaranteed kills from time to time. 
Talking about a tamer succession, you will lose your cube buff and iframes but will keep your grab and pet. She got a lot easier time in grinding in both low AP and high AP spots due to her damage, but she came out worse in any form of PvP with the lack of finesse compared to her awakening form. Still, a great dueler though and very fun to play if you want to PvP, but losing the gap closer needed to get those grubs surely hurt a lot. Same is true to Node Wars, and losing her 100% is another bad news. But overall, her role still does not change. She's still an assassin that go in the sideline and pick out strugglers. Up next, we have the Shy, which is a unique race and class in Black Desert. It is what many people call as the Lolly race, easily replacing the Tamers in that title. This is also an experimental class for Pearl Abyss, giving Shy the unique true support role being able to start as a professional in alchemy and gathering, having a boost on life skills XP, increased weight, and higher base HP, making her basically the most ideal life skill alt. The downside however is its reduced PvP damage, making Shy horrible in defending spot. She basically can't defend spot at all, unless you outgear your enemies so much that they can't kill you. Still, not being killed is different from defending your spot. Anyway, in low and PvE, the Shy is below average. Its boomerang does huge range damage, but the AoE is not so good. She also has a blind spot in front of her, as the boomerang attacks in a circular path most of the time. Not to mention that Shy is pretty clunky in dashing in between packs of enemies, which I really hate a lot when grinding for long hours. In high and PvE, however, the Shy is surprisingly a great class. She deals huge damage and her supporting skill helps sustain her grinding. High-end spots also requires less dashing around, removing that clunky dash problem that she has. Now as mentioned earlier, Shy is definitely the worst class in 1 vs 1, and worse is simply an understatement. However, in large scale PvP, the Shy is very in demand. Like the bards in other games, the Shy multiplies the battle capabilities of each player. You can heal, you can buff them with health regen, or give them more attack speed. You won't deal much damage but being naturally tanky lets you able to stay in the battlefield and support your allies for a long time. You won't get kills, but she is a fantastic class and the true support class in BDO. The next class we have is the Lan, a class from the Far Eastern Hasu Kingdom using Crescent Pendulum and Noble Sword as main weapon and a Crimson Glaives in Awakening. She has taken an inspiration from Blade and Soul game with the ability to glide and is currently one of the best duelers out there. In low in PvE, the LAN is an excellent class which has the mobility to come in and delete enemies in a single skill, then move into the next pack and use another skill. In high-end spots, the LAN is still a great class to have with her low cooldown high damage skill that heals her at the same time, making it less reliant to potion. She can also easily sidestep behind her enemies and deal those sweet back attacks all day long. In PvP, the LAN is top class in 1 vs 1 with a simple grab damage combo as her trademark. Her medium range grab is definitely one of the best in game and one of the hardest to dodge, while she can just fly out if ever it fails. If she has her black spirit rage available, then the grab damage combo is pretty much a guarantee kill already. In large scale PvP, like other assassin type classes, the LAN is not really suitable to engage in the front and excel more on picking up fights in the sidelines. Her ability to glide however gives her a fairly unique and niche role in Node Wars, from bypassing enemy frontlines and picking up key targets from the back, to jumping above barricades and demolishing key building units and disrupting fort repairs. On to the land succession and she became a lot better in low AP spots while maintaining her capability on grinding in high AP areas. She did lose a lot of her healing skills, but she got more damage which pretty much balances that one out. 1 vs 1 and she's still a good dueler, but losing that grab makes her somewhat weaker, as she will need to find a different way to engage her enemies. Large scale however, and she is absolutely amazing. She got a lot of protective abilities and super armors that she can tank a group of players while not dying, and as usual, she has her glide ability that lets her go in the middle of the fray very fast and let her go out at the same time once her skills are in cooldown. Her CC is also pretty disruptive as her AoE range is simply amazing, making her such a fun class and great class in Node Wars as long as you are not outgeared by your enemies. 
Next up, we have the Sorceress, the user of the Dark Arts. The Sorceress originated from the town of Tarif in Medea, using an amulet and a talisman to utilize dark energy and fuel her attacks. At awakening, she becomes Death Incarnate herself, using a sight to cut down her enemies. She was well known due to her iframes, making her very difficult to catch, but the nerf in stamina has limited her iframe capabilities. In low and PvE, the Sorceress is pretty average as her mobility is more focused for a battle in a limited area, rather than being able to move in between large distances. In high and PvE, she was once the top farmer in Hysteria, but the violation nerf hurts her damage output a lot, resulting to other classes being able to close the gap with the Sorceress. But even with that nerf, she is still one of the top classes in high-end areas, as her high sustained DPS is above average compared to other classes. In 1 vs 1 PvP, the Sorceress is definitely one of the top classes even if she does not have a grab. Her iframes are more than enough to find an opening to knock down the enemies and then do massive damage afterwards. In large skill PvP however, the nerf on its stamina has pretty much limited the Sorceress' ability to survive in the front lines. She still does do great damage from time to time if she finds a good spot, but can't really survive for that long to deal those damage. Her ultimate black hole though is still the best there is, making the sorceress always vulnerable in group gameplay and ranking her higher. Going with the succession, and you will see the sork retain her PvE capabilities. Her movement may have been limited a bit after missing some dashes from her awakening kit, but overall, she is still very good farmer and is absolutely a top class in high AP spots due to her raw damage post violation nerf. In PvP, and Succession Sork I must say is even better than her Awakening. Her skills are mid-range and can be used in between iframe, making her very safe from being countered. Although Awakening has much more potential, but the simplicity of the Succession Kit offers safer options to attack and not relying much to your ping in order to not get hit while attacking. Same is true in Large Hail, in which I prefer the Succession Sork more, but either way, whatever you choose, both Path of the Sorceress offers some of the best PvP kits in the game, so long as you utilize your iframes well. Going back now to melee classes, the next one we have on our list is the Musa, another class originating from the East, wielding a blade and a hornbow as main weapon and a crescent blade in Awakening. He is one of the classes that is constantly spinning and attacking enemies in 360 degrees AOE around him. This plus the dashes gives Musa a perfect score in low and PvE grinding, being the fastest to move from pack to pack no matter the distance and melting enemies around him when he arrives. He's a little bit slower in high-end areas as he needs a little bit more AP compared to other classes, but still one of the top classes out there. He is literally on far in PvE wherever he goes. In PvP, Musa is fairly average, or maybe a slightly below average class depending on who is playing. The super armor dashes keeps you safe while trying to find an opening, but he is also full of opening himself. He does not have a grab, making it a bit difficult engaging other super armor classes, but again, Musa just zips around while waiting for that perfect opportunity to launch his own CC and can easily sidestep while he dashes. His offhand weapon also complements his dash, giving him a ranged CC. It is not used like how Ranger and Archer has used their bow, but it has its own utility. In large scale PvP, the Musa is known to go towards the enemy backlines and unleash fires of hell. His protected mobility makes him one of the best classes that can easily bypass front lines to mow down key targets on the backlines. His damage and AoE can easily disrupt a lot of enemies and can add him a lot of kills as long as you are careful enough not to get CC as well. The succession path of the Musa is one of the rare update which lowers his PvE capability, as he lost his Crescent Blade which in turn lost his very popular spin to win gameplay. He is still a great class though, both in low end and high end areas as his mobility is not lost, but it's uncomparable on how he can farm in low AP areas with his flaming spear. In high end PvE, the succession Musa can do better in spots like Hystria or Star's End, but fares worse in places like Akman compared to his awakening form. He fares better though in 1 vs 1 PvP, due to his raw damage output which is compressed in a single area unlike his awakening form. 
He has higher damage but still need to find that opening while zipping around. While in large kill PvP wars, then he is also worse compared to the Awakening as the main reason why Musa is so good in those large fights are due to his huge AoE range and knockdown skills alongside it, which you lost with succession. Yes, they do deal more damage but they are just not as effective as they were during Awakening. Our next class is the Mewa, which is the female equivalent of Musa. Using the same blade and hornbow as main weapon, an Ikari Spear in Awakening. While the Musa is a flaming spinner, the Mewa is your icy queen that will stab her enemies a thousand times. She also got the protected dashes, giving her a lot of mobility in and out of combat. But in low and PvE, this mobility could not really compensate much on her limited conical attack pattern which is only directed in front of her. In high and PvE on the other hand, the Mewa does better job with attacks that can shred through the high defenses of the enemy mobs. Also in high end spot, it will have more chances in grouping up the enemies in front of her compared to low end spots where most will die in one hit before she can reposition herself to hit more. In 1 vs 1 PvP, Mewa needs a lot of mastery in the class toolkit to be effective. Yes, she can melt through the shields of other classes, but Musa can directly bypass those from the back with all the desync happening. Mewa also has difficulty against iframe classes, while Musa has slightly better time with them. Mewa has larger damage though, and if you can land CC, then Mewa can simply do devastating damage. But trading SA is not really her forte, making it difficult to execute. The large scale war is another Mewa's weakness. They also has the ability to go directly in enemy backlines, but her limited AoE lets her attack a pretty limited number of people. She's still a very fun class to play, but will really need some knowledge in the game in order to play effectively. Now going on with her succession path, she has given up the spear and blooms back to wield the blade and bow. Her low and PvE grinding speed is much faster now with better AoE range and lateral movements which she was not capable in doing in awakening form. Not much has changed in high-end spots as Mewa can still induce huge damage to those high DP mobs. A very great class indeed in PvE. Not as great as the Awakened Musa but still top tier. Nothing has changed so far with her PvP capability in both 1 vs 1 scenario and in large scale. She still zip in and out trying to land that sweet CC but needs to be very careful with her dashes as the stamina nerf has also affected her. Alright, now onto our ultimate assassin classes. The first one we have is the ninja. As the name implies, the ninja is a master of stealth, able to blend into the shadows and launch sudden attacks to assassinate his enemies. He wields a short sword as main weapon while preferring a shuriken over a kunai in offhand. In Awakening, he will have the Shura Katana, which is simply 9 different swords at his disposal. In PvE, the ninja is not good in both low-end and high-end spots. He does have the mobility to move fast, but the AoE is very mediocre to hit the enemies efficiently. He also has the burst damage, but not enough to sustain it in high-end spots. But with his weakness in PvE, the ninja compensates heavily in 1 vs 1 PvP. He is the ultimate assassin, and it just shows in 1 vs 1 scenario where a ninja just overpower all other classes. He has the block jump that can easily teleport the ninja behind an enemy and can use a grab directly after it. He also has the damage to burst down any classes and capable of stealth, making the ninja top tier even after the nerf he received in 2019. In large scale PvP, like other assassin type characters, he is more better in picking up 1 vs 1 or even 1 vs x fights on the sidelines and can occasionally go behind enemy back to kill key targets. But its usefulness to infiltrate is limited as he does not have that huge burst of consistent dashes to safely engage the backlines. He's a fast runner, but not fast enough to avoid the enemy frontlines. Still, the ninja does well on to speak of and is a great scout with his stealth ability. This succession update for the ninja make him start pretending as the samurai assassin and goes back to becoming a full-fledged ninja. As a result, he does a lot better in both low-end spots and high-end spots due to his better AoE skills and can outform his awakening counterpart a lot more. In 1 vs 1, he is still king of the hill with crazy iframes. There was a lot of nerf in his PvP damage and will need a lot more input now in order to be efficient as he loses his crazy damage dealing skills. 
While nothing has changed much in a large scale PvP, Asahi is still more of a skirmisher and a scout. Dikunoichi, which literally means a female ninja, is the female equivalent of ninja in BDO. She uses the same short sword as her male counterpart but prefers a kunai more than the shuriken. In Awakening, the Kunoichi acquires the chakram, which looks like a big hula hoop of death, giving the Kunoichi the ability to have its own version of spin to win, dishing out huge damage while healing her at the same time. This ability gives her better low and PvE advantage over the ninja due to its AoE but still a far cry from the capability of the top classes. In high-end PvE, she still does better with better resource management from her spin to win heal but again considered to be just average grinder. Again what the Kunoichi lacks in PvE, they nail it in 1 vs 1 PvP. They all have the iframes and grab of the ninja but has way more ways to CC her enemies. Against male counterpart though, she comes a little bit lower but she is there on top against all other classes. In large kill PvP, the Kinoichi is in a better spot than a ninja with her crowd control skills being somewhat useful. She can't initiate directly but can definitely help the main group with her mid-range spinning wheels that can disrupt enemy charges. This also lets her be on the backline and protect it from classes that may come in with her great 1 vs 1 capability. Now taking a quick look on Kinoichi's succession version, like most classes, she got a lot easier time in PvE and is extremely fast. This is true for both low end and high end, making her a very fast grinder. And again, this improvement in PvE capability does not really affect her 1 vs 1 PvP advantages, where she still comes on top. She does need to utilize her movement well, unlike her awakening kit which can tank damage from time to time, but those auto target fox claws are disgusting in PvP. However, her large skill capability is now on par with the ninja as she lost her mid-range CC attacks and that very useful spinning heal. The next class on our list is the Berserker, a class under the giant's race. The Berserker wields human-sized dual axe, which they replace with a hand cannon with the help of the dwarves during awakening. A very tanky class indeed, the Berserker charges towards the thick of the battlefield with no regards to his enemies. In PvE, the Berserker is a pretty average class in both low-end and high-end spots. They have the damage and the mobility, but they are just in the middle or just above average grinder. They are very popular though as speed hackers, but seriously, don't follow those guys or else you might get banned. In 1 vs 1, the Berserker is a great class. They have a grab that makes Wrestling Mania a child's play, and if you have the gear, then your enemy will most likely be knocked out from a series of those smackdowns, although the CC change has kinda limit this insane ability. Same is true for large scale PvP. He is naturally tanky and have high health, enabling him to go in and deal some damage while tanking damage at the same time. A berserker with an ultimate in a tight spot, such as a castle entrance, also means a death sentence to those who tries to infiltrate. He is a very fun class to play with and easy to use, but difficult to master. Going now to the Berserker succession, and I think many would agree that this has to be the worst succession yet and in dire need of major buff. He is just an average grinder in low end spot, and fairly decent and maybe can outgrind the awakened Zerker in high end areas. However, he is in a really bad spot in PvP, either in 1 vs 1 or large scale, and is just too slow to catch up from other classes. Unlike in the early days of video, before awakening came out, that the Berserker can just tank out damage while unleashing his AoE skills in the middle of the enemy, it is no longer possible with today's gear that can melt him very fast. He also lost his range skills, and with all skills being in melee, being in naturally slow class is not a good sign for him. The next one we have is the Guardian, and damn, she easily replaces the Valkyrie and Berserkers in their role. She uses an axe and shield in her base form while using a Jordoon in Awakening, which is a huge polearm. After her Awakening was released, she immediately became the star in BDO, and although there has been several nerfs in her ability, it is not enough to keep the Guardian from shining. She is a very slow class in both Awakening and Succession, but holy hell is her protected damage and massive AoE that is out of this world. 
Not to mention that the insane sustain she has for most of her burst skills, and we have the Wiener. In low and PvE, the Guardian can literally melt enemies by just running past them. While in mid level zones like Akman, and she has enough burst damage skills that she can cycle, as those things have insanely low cooldown compared to the AoE and damage that it can induce. She, however, falls off once entering the high end areas, as her burst is no longer enough to quickly kill the enemies. In proper 1 vs 1, she might be on a disadvantage as she is indeed slow but just a small miscalculation from enemy side and the guardian can severely punish and can even go for a kill. While in large scale where there is a lag fiesta and there you have the guardian with super armor in the middle of the enemy pack and just unleashing her skill without care for the world. She has the burst in movement with her dash that has a forward guard while her phoenix form infernal nemesis makes her entirely invincible while traveling. And again, God Incinerator, which is a low cooldown, super armor, burst damage dealing and debuff making skill, all the while healing the Guardian, and it's no wonder it can incinerate any of the BDO's god with his skill, how much more us which are just mere mortals. Her charge skill can also one-shot squishy characters like Archer, in which the charge time can be removed by the Guardian's Q buff. Anyway, you got the idea, and this is the reason why Guardian currently is one of the best classes in-game aside from her 1 vs 1 capability. Now moving on on her succession path, and you will still have the Guardian being such a great class. However, due to how her awakening form is just so great, it makes her succession look weak in contrast, which is not entirely true. PvE capability might be slower, with lesser damage compared to awakening, but still a very solid class and can pull great numbers wherever she goes. In 1 vs 1 PvP, and not much has changed. She is still slow but can easily punish enemies' mistake. While in large scale, she is not that good compared to her awakening form but she does trade her damage with great utility skills which is always good to have in group PvP. Also her ultimate deals so much damage with an almost instant effect making her very dangerous. The second class release in 2020 is the Hashashin, a rare male class with the Prince of Persia vibes. As the name suggests, Hashashin is an assassin type character which uses a Shamsir as main weapon and a Helari in offhand. He is quick at his feet and can teleport out of harm's way if problem occurs. In Awakening, he uses dual glaives which gives him a 360 AoE damage that rivals that of Ikinoichi. He got a great burst of dashes that rivals the Blader classes at the cost of stamina. When timed properly, his dashes makes him a very great grinder in low AP spots but the stamina limitations kinda hold him back. You also need to learn the animation cancels as his wind up animation is one of the slowest if not done properly. But if done properly, he becomes very quick and satisfying to control. Mid level to high end, and the Hashashin is a pretty okay class. He doesn't really shine anywhere but absolutely not a bad class. He also lacks the sustain and so potions might be needed if you don't have enough DP for the area. In PvP, he is still an okay kind of class, he's not as OP like the other assassin classes like the ninja, but he can hold on his own with his grab and mid-range knockdowns. He is however a bit tricky to use as chaining skills are very important to cancel most of slow wind-up animations. In Node Wars and Siege Wars, I think he is one of the better classes among the assassin classes as he has super armors on his main AoE skills. As long as he has support, he can dish out damage and can perform 1 vs X. But it needs to be very careful as like any other assassin classes, he is still very squishy in nature and is like a wet noodle under focused fire of enemy classes. Moving on with his succession, he is a slower grinder in low AP spots as his mobility is not good compared to his awakening form. His DPS however is way better, though requiring him to be sometimes stationary making him a better choice in high AP spots. 1 vs 1 PvP and it's a coin toss between Awakening and Succession. His Tornadoes deals crazy damage if used properly, making it both an offensive skill and a defensive one too. If your enemy is using potato graphics and can see the Tornadoes, well, good riddance for him. However, he did lost his grab, making it more difficult to fight classes with blocks. So I rate him equal to his Awakening form as it greatly depends on the matchup. Lastly, in large scale PvP, and Succession is even better than his awakening form. 
His tornado is again amazing to you, but very annoying to your enemies. And with many people turning off effects in large scale PvP, this makes the invisible tornadoes all the more deadly. His mid-range attacks also lets him deal damage to other melee classes while being safe from the barrage of attacks from enemy range classes. And lastly, we have the last class of 2020, which is the Nova. For now, however, Awakening and Succession is still not yet out, and so we will just have to review its base form. Currently, the Nova is a very slow class, even slower than the Guardian, but it does hit like a truck, and can deal crazy damage even without his Awakening or Succession skills. In PvE, she's a bit clunky at the moment and requires a good aim to use her skills. Once his attack animation starts, you can no longer change the direction of her attack. This may change once Awakening and Succession will be released, but right now she's pretty good in low AP spots with her dashes, while still being somewhat mediocre to okay in high AP areas. However, her being able to grind high AP spots in her base form is actually quite amazing already, and the added damage of the Succession and Awakening skill sets might just give her the boost to be top tier in grinding, but that is yet to be determined. In 1 vs 1 PvP, just like the Guardian, her attacks are very telegraphed and easy to dodge. She might have the mid-range grab, but it's usually only usable to other slow classes. When used in classes that moves a lot, then it most of the time misses. When against non-grab classes, she can just basically block forever and just let her guards do their thing. While against other grab classes, especially the quick ones, and she might not fare that well. Overall, I rate her just to be okay class in PvP, but once again this is only for her base form. Large scale and she performs just like a tank. The recent nerf on her frost wall does affect her blocking capabilities, but she's still the only one that can survive the longest in block stuns against heavy enemy fire and her mid-range attacks makes her able to steal dish damage right from the black stuns. And so that's it for now. Which class are you planning to play? Tell us in the comment section below. See you soon in the next video. Peace!